Tell when you go. You're good. All right. Video games is a fairly young art form. Um, it's a large number of the game's mechanics are based on win-loss, and the easiest way to represent win-loss in a binary situation is life and death. And the way to represent the transition between life and death is usually violence. And that's where uh, policy makers eventually get upset with video games, because they believe that violence in video games cause causes violent behavior. I'm here to say that violence in video games is innocent of any violent activity in the real world. Um, basically, politicians like to scapegoat mass shootings, like school shootings by teens, to, in order to come up with a situation, because we're all scared, we don't know why people are shooting people, and we're trying to come up with the reasons so that way it's not our fault, and we have an explanation. And video games is that scapegoat. Also, video games actually does the opposite of increasing violent aggression. It actually reduces it if it causes anything at all. Um, the first, one of the first shootings cited to had video games be the cause is uh, the Combine Massacre. The, it was later revealed by investigators that the shooters did in, indeed play Doom, which was released in 1993, and the shooting was 1999. And uh, they tried to draw a causation line from the video game to the violence at, violent acts at uh, Combine. I'm here to tell you that it's not necessarily the it's not the video games at all that cause this. It's the fact that we have gun control <laughs> that uh, sometimes doesn't work out the way it should, mental health problems, and uh, and the news and the media glorify the whole act of killing people in a mass fashion. When, uh, when mass shootings happen or mass murders occur, the name you remember, if you remember a name at all, is the one perpetrating the act. You don't remember the name of the victims. And that's a sad fact. But anyone who's wanting to leave their mark on a place where they feel like they have nothing will turn to violence and see that the media will make their name live a bit, of, little bit higher than they feel like they already do. Um, gun control, like in the United States isn't the best, and that's where we have the most uh, mass, mass shootings. Um, what, some of the most mass shootings. And uh, in Australia, guns are virtually, virtually banned, and there are video games there. They get Rainbow Six Siege, great game by the way. Um, and they don't have the mass shooting problems we do. Um, mental health is also the, one of the main reasons people turn to violence the way they do. And uh, video games has no effect on that. Um, according to a Youth Adolescence Journal, a study done by a scientist showed that elevated mental health symptoms uh, and results did not, did not prove provide any sorry provide any support that their hypothesis is that violent video games would increase bullying and delinquency in children. So it showed that there was no causational uh, effect there, even in kids that are considered high risk. Um, aggression when video game players is, is found to have be, is found to be non-existent. Uh, causation post-game. Um, <sighs> According to a social science uh, network research journal, a study posted there said violent video games are associate, associated with reductions in both violence and all crime. They actually cor correlated it to uh, game sales uh, violent video games, which had an M rating, which by the ESBR system here in America, Entertainment Software Board Review, board review um, 
so that when video, bound video games were released, there were no causational loops. Another study showed that during like the during the release of the biggest three most most recent studyable games, Call of Duty Black Ops GTA, uh, San Andreas, and GTA 4, overall decrease in violent crime was in a decline. It's showing that because the uh, because it has a decline consistently, it's <laughs> it's a uh, uh, cathartic effect where you're going ahead and exerting your rage and not acting it out on people. Um, yes, there's aggression during the game, but that's any game. It's competition, not violence. It's you trying to beat the other player in the game, and after that, it's called sportsmanship when you shake the other player's hand after. Um, in conclusion, uh, um, video games are a scapegoat for violent crimes, and it's not the case. And it actually benefits a is a better outlet for aggression and helps reduce it. Um, thank you. All right, Tucker, we know what the topic is from the very beginning. That's fine. I kind of like that visualization at the beginning about it being a binary world and life and death is the way it gets visualized and violence is the transition that gets us to that point. I thought that that was a pretty effective introduction. Uh, you do have a statement of your proposition. Uh, it seems to be phrased adequately that it's innocent of being responsible for these sorts of things. That's good. There, There is sort of a preview um, it's not always stated as, as, a, as the secondary claims. In fact, in the body of the speech, I don't really, I mean, I heard references to these points, but they weren't presented as distinctive claims. There's never any signposting on them, so that's a little bit problematic. But you do set up the idea that there's scapegoating going on and that the video games actually have the opposite effect that's, that's happening. So on the first point, you don't really come back to the notion of scapegoating except that you explain that there are all kinds of, all kinds of reasons why these things happen. And you refer to lack of gun control, mental health issues, media glorification. The only evidence that I heard on, those particu on this particular point was kind of this uh, hypothetical example about, well, rem you remember the names of the perpetrators, but we don't remember the names of the victims. And so I guess that's the media glorification issue that's going on there. It shouldn't be hard to find somebody who has suggested that the source of these problems is a lack of um, gun control or that there are mental health issues that are going untreated. And the thing that you're talking about, I think there's plenty of information where people have made the argument that this is in fact one of the reasons, that, particularly when you have uh, these folks who go out in a blaze of glory, as they say, uh, they engage in this. It's not so much that they've been playing Grand Theft Auto as it is that they have mental issues and they have delusions of being uh, historically significant by taking some action like that. I think there's there's good information on that point, but you don't really have that. You just kind of present the theory on it, and I think you need better proof on that particular point. Um, the, I think there's another argument about aggression that you're trying to present that sort of gets buried because you don't have it as a, as a distinct second point in the argument. And there's, again, it sounds like you've got some information in your speech. There's one place where you're talking about it's like a post-game sort of thing. There's nothing that exists like this after the game. I'm like, okay, where's the information that supports that? I know you read something. I know you've got the information. It's not made it into the speech. So I think that that's a problem. You're not, you don't really have the evidence there. There are a couple of places, though, where you do cite some information, and I appreciated that. I thought that uh, you did a, a, an okay job on that, that there's no support for causality. The, the, the other argument that you make in the speech, and it's, like I said, sometimes it floats 
in and out, it doesn't feel like it's a distinct point, is the argument that says video games have the opposite effect. There's a cathartic effect. It's likely to reduce the uh, negative impacts of violence on society. And it's really kind of a secondary study that you make a reference to, and it's a single study, and it's not very specifically cited. So I, I think there's information there. It needs to be uh, more clearly cited, and you're going to have to find some additional information because the this is a, one of the major points of your speech, and it seems like it's really kind of a secondary issue in some other study that you're using for a different point instead of developing this point on its own. So that's a little bit problematic. So I thought that the organizational issues were uh, the biggest problem in the speech. You could use more information in your speech. You've got a little bit here and there. It could be stronger. The sources sometimes remain kind of ambiguous. Uh, the generalizations, I think, I understood the points that you were making at the end of the speech. It's a little bit clearer what the arguments are. Uh, your delivery is okay. I think that I think you got some anxiety issues that you that are maybe bugging you a little bit. Uh, take a deep breath. You're doing okay. I, I I don't think you have anything to worry about. When you watch back, it'll probably be more noticeable to you than it was to us. All right. All right. Thank you.